With just a few mods, this MiG-29 might not get those cheeks clapped by Mihai. Still not firing! I ain't afraid of it! Spare eight, no dog fighting. Negative. I'm not letting this slide. Hey there, I'm John, this is Two Brothers RC, and this is the Arrows MiG-29 Twin 64mm. Now this is a pretty underwhelming jet in stock form, but it's almost where I want it to be with some mods. This jet is one of those airplanes that got a bad rap, deservedly so, for being underpowered and heavy. And in stock form, it is indeed underpowered and heavy, but when you do some work to improve it, which should have been done by the factory by this point if I'm speaking bluntly, the MiG really comes to life and it flies like a fighter jet instead of a Cessna begging to be dragged behind the woodshed and put out of its misery. If you've never owned an Aero's MiG before, I'll explain the issues that it has. First, the nozzles are too large. They don't compress the air enough to produce the amount of thrust that the motors are rated for. You end up having to fly at close to 70% throttle the entire time to keep the damn jet in the air. That's unacceptable, but it is fixable by using 3D printed nozzles. Second, there's a massive lead weight that weighs 108 grams in the bay that houses the ESC, distributed throughout the entire airframe, plus a small 20 gram weight in the tail. The tail weight isn't really the problem here, but the weight in the middle of the plane causes the jet to require more thrust to fly and doesn't do anything to shift the center of gravity back. Speaking of center of gravity, the third issue is that the jet is super nose heavy in stock form, kind of like the FMS SU-27, so you have to trim the stabilators up to fly level, causing even more drag and reducing flight time even more. It sucks. But, hey, unlike another brand that sells lightweight planes, at least this one doesn't have the paint flaking off the second that you look at it, or hinges failing from flying the plane as advertised. So it's got that going for it, at least. I'm not trashing the MiG, I'm just explaining what the problems it has are. This is actually one of the most stable planes that you're going to fly, even with the mods that I'm going to suggest later in the vid. Because I've increased the stab travel to something like 80 degrees with upgraded servos, you would think it would be uncontrollable. But it isn't. Far from it, actually. I took it up on an SMC 4400 pack, which just barely fit into the canopy, checked the center of gravity, took it up to do a backflip. It was the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. That's honestly pretty pathetic. I thought I would get a lot more out of this. Right? Even with all the mods I performed, the jet is so positively stable with that battery that it refused to do what it should have done. The wing load was simply too high to swing the tail around with a larger pack. So. Let's see what it does with an SMZ 3600 pack. Holy sh! What a difference removing some nose weight will do. Sure, it needs a gyro to fly like this, but the full scale MiG-29 needs a flight computer to fly too, so consider it a scale detail and stop telling people that gyros are bad. Now, you'd think that I might be satisfied with the aerobatic performance with the 3600. Nope. We gotta go tail heavier. I used SMC 2800 packs this time and nearly paid the price for it. This is the absolute limit of the plane's performance. Holy crap in a pita. How did I save that? Mm -hmm. Got into an unrecoverable flat spin and then got out of that. What the hell was that? It was a good save as well as it was. Oddly enough, the SU-27 almost hit these same trees and also had a similar recovery in the exact same spot. I'd say that 3600s are about as light as you should go when you do the mods that I'm suggesting. Anything else risks instability. Sure, you can just avoid a crash by doing a Cobra, but you also risk crashing from the Cobra recovery. The mods are totally worth the effort in my view, and fortunately, they're not too annoying to do. The jet does way better with the nozzle upgrade, center of gravity shift, and additional throw when it comes to taking off and landing. Properly tuned, 
AS3X Plus will help a ton with stability on approach as your flaps are dropped. Yes, you should be using a throttle to gain mix. This is covered in the AS3X Plus video that we did recently. If you don't understand why throttle to gain mixes are so important, it's because without them, you can only tune your high speed aircraft to their highest speed. Otherwise, any gains that would actually be effective at low speed would cause a ton of oscillation or a mid-flight breakup. With the throttle to gain mix, the jet is very stable on approach, super easy to touch down with, and landing with it becomes more about your skill with regard to approach angle, attitude control, and speed control. The gyro keeps it from getting disturbed off its trajectory as you approach the runway. It also helps make takeoffs significantly more smooth too. There's really no drawbacks to it at all. Remember earlier when I said that the CG mod helps with flight time? Just because the jet is a pig in stock form doesn't mean that you can't make this piggy grow some wings with the mod. An SMC 3600 HV pack netted me almost 5 minutes of flight on average, even with aggressive flying like these ridiculously low inverted high alpha passes. or these low-level Cobra recoveries. Don't try this at home. That's really impressive. That was cool. The replacement nozzles are honestly the biggest upgrade to this bird. 3D printing these replacements is where you'll notice the largest improvement in how it flies, making it so that you can use less of the left stick to fly and improving overall airspeed. Getting the CG shifted back also reduces the up stab trim required too, which makes the jet fly with less drag and it improves overall flight time. The servo upgrade is something that I'll say is entirely optional. I put in AGFRC B13 servos with the longest arms that I could find. Unlike the SU-27, modding the servos here doesn't provide any clear benefit unless you also run a lightweight battery and shift a ton of weight to the rear of the jet. Increasing throws makes no difference otherwise. I don't know what it is about this jet's design at this scale, but it's very resistant to entering post-stall maneuvers. In fact, it's pretty hard to stall this jet at all to begin with unless you're deliberately chopping the throttle and pulling the elevator stick. To really get it to perform post-stall, you need to follow the guide at the end and get that weight shifted aft. It ain't doing it otherwise. Feels bad, man, but that's just how it is sometimes. Another issue with the MiG is the nose gear. Aside from the wheels being stiff and not providing any useful suspension, the nose strut is exactly the opposite. Too much suspension. The spring is too soft, and if you land on grass, your MiG will look depressed with a droopy nose. Oh no! You broke the nose. This really shouldn't be an issue. Yes, you can take the strut apart and use a stiffer spring, but most people don't fly from pavement, so the struts will need to be somewhat stiffer to keep the nose from being torn apart. You can have the best landing in the world, but it doesn't matter if it happens on grass. If you're a grass pilot, I'd say skip this jet or prepare to change the nose spring out. Here's how I modified this jet so that you too can succeed in flying absurd inverted high alpha passes or low level Cobra maneuvers that I told you not to try at home. Step 1. Cut off the foam nozzles and replace them with 3D printed nozzles. Those are important because they'll fix the thrust. They're linked in the description below. Use a generous amount of medium CA to fix them in place. And yes, you need to get these printed yourself, I can't do it for you, sorry guys. Step 2. Take the long weight out of the ESC compartment that weighs 108 grams and toss it out. The ESC compartment is the long plastic tray on the belly that's screwed in place. Step 3. Remove the cylindrical weight in the tail. Step 4. Use the wheel weights linked in the description to stack 56 grams, or 2 ounces, of tail weight in the cavity that the cylindrical weight was installed in. Cut enough foam out to fit the weights, then cover them up with red electrical tape so that it matches the fuselage. Step 5. If you want to replace the servos, pull the old ones out and install AGFRC B13 DLM units in both stabilator pockets. Use the longest arm. If you want full possible throws for 80 degrees of vertical travel, you'll need to use a Dremel cutoff wheel to cut a notch where the servo arm binds on the plastic bay that the stab servos are glued into. Now, I did replace the ESC with an Avian Dual 40 amp that I had laying around. 
I did this so that I'd have integrated voltage telemetry and wouldn't need to install one of the Spectrum voltage cables. You don't need this ESC, I'm just using it because it was easier for me. Unfortunately, I'm also an idiot and I burnt the receiver by plugging the wrong pack into it to get the AS3X values for you. So, what I'll suggest if you set up AS3X Plus is to follow the Relearn Servo Settings chapter of the guide linked below and set the jet up so that it has roll corrections on the stabs in addition to pitch corrections. The video I'm referencing will walk you through it, so click the linked AS3X video and check out the Relearn Servo Settings chapter to learn how to do it. If you need any help, hop on Discord. That's linked below, too. Once you've got the stabs correcting for roll and pitch, start with low roll and yaw gains. You can run moderate to high pitch gains without risking oscillation. Make sure that you're using a throttle to gain mix. That's also covered in the AS3X Plus guide, too. And as a word of warning, definitely don't fly it as aft as I got it with the 2800 packs. Otherwise, a flat spin may end up being as unrecoverable as it was here. I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> it's fixable if I want to get it back up, and it does perform really well with these mods. Just don't run it on 2800 packs, and you should never run into this situation. The MiG does have impressive agility with the mods demoed here, and fortunately it doesn't give up any real stability to do it either. If you like the MiG, even with its flaws, you can support what we do here at Two Brothers RC by picking up one for yourself from the links below. If you like these kinds of long-term follow-up reviews, hit that like button and maybe smash that super thanks while you're at it. And since this jet does Cobra now, you can feel confident picking up a new sticker from the Two Brothers merch shop to slap on it and celebrate. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys again next week with the E-Flight Viper 64mm and some updates on the future of the channel. Don't worry, it's good news.